watching Beyond Markets. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. On the show today, we'll continue our conversation ahead of Nigeria's 2019 elections with a focus on building the ideal Nigeria. We'd love for you to be part of this conversation. You can do so by following us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at CNBC Africa. You can also follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. I want to use the hashtag 2019 elections 410 and hashtag Beyond Markets. Now, as Nigeria inches closer to the February 2019 elections, the electorate have continued to receive a flurry of campaign promises from aspirants within the political class. One of the candidates is Fela Durute. Fela Durutoye, the presidential candidate of the Alliance for New Nigeria, Fela, who has repeatedly emphasized that his campaign train is not a jamboree, but a social impact project seeking to connect all Nigerians. He now joins us in the studio to share his thoughts, of course, uh, what we can expect from him. Thank you so much, Fela. Pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you. So we, we've been following your <laughs> we've been following your campaign trail as a when campaign it's officially open, and uh, we know you've moved about, moved around for a bit. But I want to start by asking you, why are you running for president? Well, I'm running for president because the current Nigeria is not, it's not working. That's that's it's just that simple. It's not working, not just for a few. It's not working for almost everybody. I mean, I always say it this way: if you have to need a generator to get power. Nigeria is not working for you. If you need to get a borehole to get water, Nigeria is not working for you. If you need to pay for schools today to get quality education, Nigeria is not working for you. I, I went to school literally free. If you need to know someone to be able to get to, to private hospital to get a good health care, Nigeria is not working for you. If you need a security man um, or security agent or you need to have your own private police force, Nigeria is not working for you. So I think Nigeria literally is not really working for anybody. I mean, it's especially the, the poor with that, that form the largest part, almost 87% of, of our nation is currently living under poverty. Not for a nation that is as blessed and as and endowed as we are. The only challenge is that as blessed and as richly endowed in natural mineral resources, human resources as Nigeria is, we are a nation where people just don't have the opportunities to, to be able to do the best that they can and contribute to not just their the well-being of this nation, but their own personal well-being. So, so for me, Nigeria is not working. The people don't have opportunities to be able to actualize their dreams and that is all because we do not have good governance. I am learn, I'm, I'm running for a new Nigeria to, to lead a team of people who will deliver good governance to this nation. Okay, I mean that is the mantra in new Nigeria. Some might ask, well, what, <laughs> what is wrong with this new this current Nigeria? I mean, you've just uh, uh, alluded to some of those points. Uh, tell us, how has it been so far? You've been about the country. You've been to a number of suburbs and selling the idea to people. I mean, your, people have referred to you as a newcomer, you're not a politician, you've never held public office, you're more or less from the private sector. Has that been a hard sell for you? Oh, not, not exactly. I think, first of all, one of the th most important things that, that I have found going all across Nigeria is that all across, and I'm talking not just the cities, but also the suburbs, the, you know, sometimes of the smaller villages, is that everyone is tired of the existing Nigeria. And they are very clear that the existing Nigeria was brought to them by the politicians who many of them have great political experience. And so many of the times you hear people say, look, it's political experience that brought us pothole in the roads. It's political experience that brought us generators. It's political experience that brought us boreholes. It's political experience that knocked out education from our schools. Uh, it's, it's political experience that has knocked out health care from our hospitals. Political experience has robbed our Naira of its value. As a, as a business consultant, I literally, I have risen to the top of my game. Um, I'm literally number one in my game. Um, that's not all, but also looking at our social impact projects, you know, mm -hmm. machine makeover in 2009, without power, without money, without government funding, we were able to paint 2009, um, 296 houses in one day, raising 2,000 people to believe in a dream of painting other people's houses that, that couldn't afford to paint their houses, but then we, we were able to help Oyo State in 2009, moved their students from performance number 28, 29 in English and maths in NECO to number three and four. So they've seen, they've seen things that we've done. My point is this, it's, it's not been a hard sell. I think that most people consider me very refreshing, but they also consider me very authentic because they've seen me work on this journey for the last 14 years. Yeah. So, you know. So, so I might ask, I mean, all that you've done, fantastic, especially at that level. So I might ask, you know, the task of running a country like Nigeria, where sometimes very complicated, I mean, just look at the national issues that we're, we'll continue to discuss, especially the issue of restructuring, which we'll come to uh, in a moment. Haven't you come across, or have you come across people who have said, yes, you know, fantastic things you've done at this or that level, but you know, 
going at as a rock level, going at I mean the presidential level, it's a big deal. It's a different ball game entirely. You may not be the man for the job. Perhaps you need to start from somewhere else, some other level, work your way to the top, gain some experience, uh, maybe at the National Assembly, some political office, get that much needed experience and p perhaps maturity okay. for you to be able to run the country. What do you say to the Okay, to so, so we'll start by saying everybody wants anybody but, but the current president now. But the current president, Buhari, was once a governor, was once a minister, was once a head of state, was once everything that you said, literally reason around the tracks. We found out that rising along the tracks does not necessarily bestow upon your competence, especially when it's not a merit-driven system. So we know that whole thing about it is essentially the, the older generation that were young when they got into government and are trying to still lay hold and keep their, their space in government that are telling everybody else, go through the ranks. Go through the ranks and learn what? Is it to learn corruption from the from the most corrupt people that have, you've ever seen? Is what, what is what is there to learn? Is it to learn how to drill potholes into our roads? Is that what I want to learn from 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 the from going through the ranks? No, that's not what we need to do. What we need to do is to be able to gather the best people in Nigeria, people who have a heart, who have competence, who are credible, and we have them. Nigerians in Nigeria and all across the world, in diaspora, there are Nigerians who know how to solve Nigerian problems. Let's be clear, Esther, Nigerian problems are not as complicated as we think. I think that yeah. many times, oh yeah, let's take for instance power. Power is not as much of a complicated problem because if power was such a complicated problem, then other nations should have not have been able to solve power problems. The reason why Nigeria's power problems are supposedly complicated is that the people who import diesel and, and generators are the key funding uh, donors to the, to the political parties that usually get you into power. When you are, there's no way you will get there and power will not become complicated. So my point is very simple. It's important that we understand that Nigerians in Nigeria and out of Nigeria know how to solve Nigerian problems. We just need the people who have the leadership will, not political will, need leadership will to be able to do those things. And we will. That's what I have. That's what I bring to the table. Okay, what you're bringing to the table, I was going to come to that. In new Nigeria, that's yes. what we're riding with. Let's start with the economy. Yes. I mean, that's where we, we, we would usually start. We've struggled for a very long time to get GDP growth. Uh, I mean, let's not even talk about double digits. I mean, there was a time when we had 7 8%, mm -hmm. and, but it wasn't inclusive growth. We talked about the difference, uh, the importance of uh, development, growth and development going hand in hand. But what we've had is growth. What we've had is the numbers. Uh, this year is 7%, next year is 8%. But we didn't have the corresponding growth, especially at a grassroots level. So what is what is your economic strategy? Okay. I don't know, maybe from starting from our resource, oil. Yes. I had a diversification mm -hmm. just to get that momentum that we need. Okay, so let me first quickly say that currently 92% of, of, of our earnings uh, comes from oil, which is wrong for a nation that is so stupendously blessed as we are. And much of the resources across Nigeria is all across Nigeria. There's literally no local government of the 774 local governments in Nigeria that is not adequately resourced. And what we need to do is to actually get those resources out of the, of the ground and begin to create economic activity all across Nigeria. And this is what's going to diversify our economy. A very practical example, Nigeria has 34 mineral resources of economically valuable quantity. One of them is gold. Gold, for instance, is found in 11 states across Nigeria, 28 local governments across Nigeria. One of the local governments that you have is Atakumasa local government in Austria state, Atakumasa, Atakumasa East local government. Okay. In a place called Ikmerido, which is just one town that has about seven gold deposits in, the, in just out, outskirts of Elisha, there are proven reserves of a million ounces of gold in one square kilometer. One ounce of gold is going for $1,232, which means in just one square kilometer, Nigeria is blessed with almost literally about a billion dollars worth of gold in Atakumosa East. That's one place. And yet, Osho State cannot pay salaries. And yet, Osho State is only generating internally generated revenue of 8.8 .8 billion naira. So, what you're seeing here is that we have a nation that today is underperforming because we are underutilizing our capacities, because we are depending only on one resource and we're not. So, we have to diversify. Okay. Sorry if I could just quickly comment. You know why, I mean, why this is the case where states do not uh, take advantage of their mineral of resources course, because, because, of course, there's money coming from yes. the federal uh, Federation, Federal Account and Allocation Committee, money and I from think oil. That, I think are you saying you're going to change that? Oh, absolutely. You are going to change absolutely. that structure, and, and, and decentralize we, it? We are completely going to decentralize that and make sure that we reallocate resources, and we're going to push you know, very hard for that. You know, a lot of going to involve you having to convince the National Assembly Oh, absolutely. Laws, I, I, and I, I, I don't know. I, I, I know you watch the news. I know you follow <laughs> Nigeria as, as in when it comes to 
the lawmakers, the back and forth that goes on between the executive and the legislature, difference of opinion, and you know, just issues to just get so protracted. And before you know it, you haven't even implemented your budget for mm -hmm. that year, and mm -hmm. things have just dragged on. Mm -hmm. So, so two things that we need to talk about here very quickly is that number one, people typically work in their own self-interest, and not necessarily selfish interest, but enlightened self-interest. So, what we are tr what we are proposing, and what this is what I'm going to bring to 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 the government. I'm saying, and I'm promising that we will do the work that is required to say. And I just gave you an e example of Ikmarido. If we take resources from a community Berindo, in Atakumosa East local government in Oshun State, 20% of the resources should go back to that place in developing infrastructure for that place that the resource was taken from. 20% should be go should go back in infrastructure funding to Atakumosa East local government, and 20% should go to the state. What that does is that it now gives all the states the ginger, as we call it, the, in, the desired imperative to make sure that everything that they have in their state becomes leveraged, and then now we can grow our economy. Currently today, states are not encouraged to do so because only 13% of the revenue comes back to the state. You know, so, so my point is this. It's the real reason why states are not doing anything is that they're getting too little from what it is that they have. And so what we're saying is our own proposition, which is a 2020-2040, which is 20% to the community, 20% to local government, 20% to the state, and 40% to federal government, will actually inspire the states to do everything that they can. Are you concerned about potential bottlenecks? I guess I know the president does have executive, you know, use the power of executive orders, but sometimes that doesn't, that is not, just not enough. You still need your law lawmakers to be on board. Oh yeah. So and that's the great thing. About about, that's the great thing about having somebody who's inspirational and who's an inspirational leader and who can has the capacity to be able to convince people. I mean, I have spent much of my life convincing people to believe okay, and so love that's, Nigeria. That's going to be the so you can bet. I mean, we would be having you know because because I, again because it is even in their best interest. Look, the senators represent a, a locality. And when you are able to show them and prove to them, this is what you've got in this place, and this is what's going to happen to you before the next election in three years, it is to their benefit. Every time we are about to be able to, to, to you know, fix a road, and we're saying the direct labor that needs to happen in the road construction, school construction, um, and all the construction that will take place in those areas to, to make it better, those things are going to be done by the people in that area. What does that mean? Jobs for their people. Jobs and prosperity for their people. We'll take a quick break, and we'll pick up from where we left off. I've been speaking to you, Fela Durutori. Presidential candidate of the Alliance for New Nigeria will continue our conversation in just a few moments. Stay with us. Welcome back to Beyond Market. Still with me is Fela Durutui. He's a presidential candidate of the Alliance for New Nigeria. Fela, thank you for your time so Thank you. Far. It's great to be with you, Esther. Now, corruption. Let's talk about corruption. That has been one of our biggest problems. The, the, the current administration, President, uh, President uh, Buhari, when he came in, did talk about you know, that, was, that was the mainstay, you know, corruption, fighting corruption. If we can curb correction, corruption, and the statistics are there, if we're able to curb corruption, we save billions, not even in, 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 in dollars. What is the plan? What is your plan? What is the strategy to fight corruption? So there are three levels of, of that you've got to be able to deal with corruption, and, and it might sound like a rhyme, but it's not. It's individual, institutional, and international. And if you can tackle corruption at these levels, number one, individual levels, which is, first of all, let's let's get the people to understand the impact of corruption on themselves, and even those who steal, okay, and, and understand that. Institutional, let's get the process to make it more difficult for people to steal, and more importantly, to make it more easier for people to report when people have stolen and most importantly to be able to prosecute and ensure that the sanctions actually are implemented as quickly as possible. Um, but the last one is inter international. Most of the monies that are stolen today are con converted into foreign exchange um, and we're talking about big monies and it's one of the things that has actually devalued our own Naira especially against um, in, you know foreign currencies because when people steal what they do is they easily immediately come and they don't care what the exchange rate is. They put it into, into monies that they think are more, it's easier for you to move out and be able to spend it out of the country. Um, so we need international uh, organizations and the, foreign, the international governments to collaborate with us and say, look, when you see money that comes in that doesn't belong, yeah, yeah, and there are flags, but we find out that it's very difficult for them to repatriate the money. So what we're saying is, let's get the people and, and the value system that we are bringing into Nigeria, which is, which is the third of the three legs of the things we want to do. Number one is to reform government and reduce the cost of governance. Number two is to uh, um, restructure our economic base, which I just spoke to you about. But the third one is to reorient our people. We need
need to completely change and, re and reintroduce values back to our people. Think values like do the right thing at all times, regardless of who is doing the wrong thing. Values like do, you know, make a positive impact. And we've got 10, va 10 value statement uh, uh, proposition that we're bringing into governance. So what are we saying? We're going to essentially deal with corruption at the individual level, making corruption unattractive, making, making transparency, making integrity something that people want to see again. And most importantly, I will be a president that is a role model for integrity. Till today, nobody has ever brought a case against me. Nobody has ever said, Fela bribed us, or nobody has ever said, you know, nothing. And when you have people that are also like that, not only as the helm of, of affairs, but as your ministers, people who have a reputation to, to defend, then you know that generally you would be able to see a, a nation. Because, listen, the, the values of the head soon become the culture of the body. So for me, Strengthen the values in the individual, strengthen the institutions to be able to do their job, and then work with the international community. Those are the three ways you're going to deal with corruption. Okay, so the, the, your, the three pillars on which you're going to run with or work with governance? Yeah, so in, in, so, yes, wastage go, in governance, yes. you said. So, we, so we're going to work on governance and, and make sure that we curb wastage and okay. corruption in governance. The number two, we're going to re, re, um, uh, restructure our economic base, which okay. is diversifying our economy and, and restructuring how much goes back to, to the resource control and financial derivatives. Okay. And more importantly, the third one is reorienting our people. Okay, let's go back to governance, the first one. Definitely, you would need good, strong institutions to help support you know, we, you know, curbing wastage and all of that. Uh, you talked about the issue of corruption, institutions like the judiciary. I'm sure you've been following the news and you've heard about, you know, you've seen headlines about how we are trying to get our judges to be, you know, to dispense justice as it went due and, you know, there's also corruption in, ju in the judiciary. So I'm just wondering to myself, how are you, you going to go about ensuring that you do get the support of those institutions who are that are currently weak, actually? Okay. Well, so I believe that the, current, the, the institutions have been weakened by the people who run those institutions. I so the first, of course, you always start is like they say, when you throw the stone in the pond, the ripples start from where the point of impact. So it's always going to start from the presidency itself. And we're going to have to collapse, in, in a sense, cut down drastically the cost of running the presidency and make sure that we're not having to buy cutlery every year or make sure that there's so much wasted that goes on in the presidency. Why would you need a 30 man or 30 car convoy to be able to go from, from Asso Rock to, to the airport? Why would you need to shut down an entire Lagos to be able to come because the president is coming to visit? There's so much wastage that goes on in that space. We've got to be able to make sure that our ministers are not going by with, with two brand new cars in a convoy when, when it's a brand new car. We're not riding uh, policemen and riding in patrol, uh, uh, what do you, Prado jeeps, and things that we can make sure that we cut down. But most importantly, and this is the one I, we're not going to, to we're going to make sure that we set up what you call a uh, uh, um, procurement council, which is something that is by far the most important thing that we need to do. Government is currently buying bulk at higher than it costs in unit price on the market. Why? Because the process of procurement is the most wasteful and the most corrupt laden process. And yet they've been able to streamline that process and say, look, we just need a procurement council so that we can buy things directly off the market without having to contract everything. You want to buy toilet roll, you send it to a contractor. Why? When there are companies that are supposed to be making the toilet roll in Nigeria, why do we not know how much toilet roll goes for? Why can't why would government be buying three times, four times? The process itself is leading with corruption. The process itself says that you have to go and get an, an advance payment guarantee or a bond from the bank. That is going to cost you. So everything that you do in the procurement process for government increases the, the cost of which government buys. And of course, just one last one, roads. We spend so much money contracting out roads when we have the Public Works Department of the Ministry of Works, who all in the, in the past used to be the ones that would fix the roads. And now we have all the potholes because there's no maintenance of those roads, um, because we're contracting out the roads and then there's no, uh, no maintenance support that we're getting from it. So my point is this, We've, we have so much to cut out. And in my own opinion, and we're trying to see how we can, Nigerians are going to demand. That, that our senators and our legislators and all those who are appointed, they should earn the minimum wage. And let's see what's going to happen. I really ah, believe well, that so. That would be interesting to see. Now, there are a number of burning national issues that I'm sure you're aware about. And I know that the next, the next president, I mean, even the current president has talked about, uh, um, talked about uh, how he's also going to go about that. And that I'm talking about restructuring. What are your thoughts or how do you define restructuring when you hear about it in the national discourse level? Well, I define restructuring, first of all, from, in my opinion, um, diversifying our economic base to make sure that we restructure our economy. And then we restructure the, the, the power. I know a lot of people talk about how devolution of powers, and that's true. 
because the most important form of devolution of powers is, you know, what you would think of as an exclusive list. For instance, governors are the chief security officers of their states, and yet they do not have any particular, you know, they don't have uh, the the commissioner of police does not report to the governor. So, so you're giving someone responsibility without giving them authority over the resources that you're making allocation. So we want to be able to see, for instance, community policing, and we want to be able to see uh, state policing uh, in addition so you, you to... you do support oh, state absolutely. policing? Absolutely. It, it's, well, have you heard the, the arguments against state police there and will how always governors be, there, could, how, I mean, yes, potential uh, misuse uh, of, of, of that? And that brings me to the interesting one, which is also to say we have to restructure the quality of the people that go into governance by restructuring our political party system. You know, today, you, if you look at it, um, the, the, the political parties are, are structured in a way whereby there's so much power resident in some people who are the power brokers, the godfathers, and we have to be able to dilute that by making sure that we have internal democracy where the people are the ones who have the power to choose who goes in. When we do that, then we'll be able to see that it, the, those who go in do not owe the godfathers, they owe the people. And when you restructure that, you will see the brightest and best people come in. You know, I tell people that the, if it was people like Obafemi Awolo or Chief Obafemi Awolo or Namdi Azikiwe, Tafabalewa, those that quality of leadership that we had as 36 governors in Nigeria, Nigeria would have been the best place in the world to live. But if the people that we have today who are looting and are not paying salaries are the ones that were the heads of the western region, northern region or eastern region, then we still would not even have had a Nigeria today. Let's quickly talk about security. That definitely would be one of the conversations, will be one of the conversations uh, during these uh, presidential elections. We know, we've seen how previous administrations have dealt with terrorism and it's grown you know, by the day. And it's a very complicated process and, um, and it's not just Nigeria. What are your plans or what is the strategy for you when you see how it's been handled by previous and the current administration? What do you see as perhaps needs that hasn't been done that needs to be done? Okay, well, first, again, it almost comes down to three things. Number one, getting intelligence, getting the institutions, and then international cooperation with your neighbors. So, so currently, the, 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 the security agencies that we have are underfunded, they're under-equipped, they're, they're not trained, they're not properly, I mean, meritocracy does not exist in the way that they, they, they rise. So, so there is no desire for excellence. And most importantly, there are no consequences for poor performance. So it is possible that a governor, as we saw in Benue State, could alert the police and say, we, are, we hear that there's going to be an impending attack. That attack happens and still nobody loses their job. And, and, and yet there's nothing. If you ask the policemen, and I'm a policeman, it's very interesting, but if you ask the policemen, they will, will tell, say to you, you've got to buy your own boots, you've got to buy your own uniform, you've got to do everything. So bottom line is that the institutions themselves are not strengthened to deliver. But that's not all. There's also no intelligence sharing. Um, and, and people don't share intelligence because you're not connected to the communities. And, and then when you do get connected to the communities, there's no intelligence sharing um, you know, amongst the security agencies to be able to see that collaboration work. Many Many of Nigeria's problems are structural, I mean structural defects, power, uh, I mean roads, transportation. We know that many of these things will take years to fix. But obviously the question has always been, are we on the right path and are we going at, a, at the, the required pace to the get us there? When, when you think about such things, what comes to your mind when you think about, fact, about the fact, okay, I'm going to be coming, hypothetically speaking, stay for four years. Uh, how, to, how much progress can I possibly achieve running a country like Nigeria, looking at how past administrations have filled at past you know, <laughs> efforts, policies, especially power? Yeah. So if, so if you spend a, a significant portion of, of, your, of your time in government fixing the mindset and the psyche of Nigerians and then fixing the institutions Nigeria will, want, will run well, the, I mean, it's hard for any one president to be able to wreck the American economy. It's very hard because the people believe they're patriotic, they're, there's a way that they relate with each other, and the institutions are strong. That's one of the most important things you have to do, fix the institutions and fix the individual, the way that we, we think as a people. But that's not all. I think that it's important for us to remember that when the President Buhari came in in the first, uh, in 2015, for almost three, three to four weeks, we had constant power. Where did that power come from? That means that, listen, I mean, and you remember the, the, the word that around town was that, oh, people were monitoring his body language. 
and obviously from his body language, they soon came to realize that he's one of the gamers. So, so okay, you know what, we can play the game. So then we started losing power bit by bit. A little while ago, there was a gent gentleman who was uh, Minister of Power by the name of Professor uh, Nidu, and, and that gentleman, uh, Nebo, sorry, uh, that gentleman was able to drive us to a point where for six months we had, we had power. In fact, Business Day newspaper recorded at one time that we had the lowest level of demand for kerosene, for, for diesel, and for petrol. Uh, and two days later, all of a sudden, the gentleman was fired. And then, from six months of having constant power, we didn't have power at all. So that tells me that power is not a complicated problem to solve. It is complicated people that are causing the complication in power. Best of luck with Thank the you. campaign. Best of luck to, to Nigeria. To Nigeria. Thank <laughs> this you. is for us. Okay. <laughs> well, that was Fela Duratoy, the presidential candidate of the Alliance for New Nigeria. Well, that's all we have on today's show. You can always watch all previous episodes of Beyond Markets on our website. and stay, That's CNBC Africa. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Markets and follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awoni. For myself and the rest of the team, do have a wonderful evening.